Hello guys, this video I'm going to show you the spacing tab of Core Framework. Now this is very similar to our typography tab as you can see. On the automatic tab here we have once again the calculator and in the base settings I can change the name of the variable. Currently by default it is set to space but I can change this to anything I like and you'll see the names of the variables will update in real time. And once again, we have a minimum size in pixels and a max size as well. So you can see here currently our base is set to the space M. So here the base scale index, we can change this to example small and it's gonna take our minimum size and max size to this small variable and use that as the base. But personally, I think medium is a good baseline. So I'm gonna reset this to be M so that our desired variables are used on the medium size. Now, just like in the typography tab, if I don't want to use these ratios, which are available here, we can click on this button to manually change it. So just to show an example of this, uh, the minimum scale ratio, if I change this to the golden ratio, for example, you'll see everything change accordingly and the same here as well. So I've just put these back to their defaults here and that's pretty much it for the base settings. Now, once again, if I want to add some more sizes, go up to six XL, for example, just click this plus icon twice. If I want to get rid of them, we click on the minus icon over here and the same for going smaller as well. Now we do also have a manual tab. So if I don't want to use the calculator at all, then I also have the option to input all of my values manually if I want everything to be pixel perfect according to my designs. And once again, we also have the option to create new scales. So if I don't want to use this scale on, let's say a specific page, then I can go ahead and create a new scale, go back to automatic and I'll rename this naming convention to space blog. So for example, if I only want to use this on a blog page, perhaps it's a blog archive or a single blog page or both, then I can use this spacing scale. So obviously it would not make sense to keep it the same. So I would obviously play around with these values to make them different. So let's say the style of my blogs wants to be uh, bigger and I want more space between everything. So then I'd increase my sizes here. So 20 24, 36, and I'll also use the golden ratios as well. So you can see everything gets a little bit bigger, especially towards the end here. And now I can reference these variables on the blog page to get a bigger spacing than our previous scale. Now, if I scroll down here, we do have once again, the class generator. So we have padding classes set up, margin, and we also have a gap. So if I wanted to use utility classes uh, instead of variables, I can go ahead and set that up here as well. So as you can see, we have a padding class, which is using the spacing scale. Now let's say I want to use a utility class for my new scale. What I can do is just add a new one. So we'll do dot padding hyphen asterisks. So that's actually the same as this one. So that wouldn't work. It would have to be unique. So let's go ahead and call this padding blog hyphen asterisks. Now it's different, but now I can reference the padding property and now I can go ahead and target spacing two. So then I could use this utility class on an element on the blog page, which in turn is going to reference our variables. So if I preview the CSS, search for padding blog, you can see that because we use the asterisks, every size has been generated. And like I said, it is referencing our variables for the padding. Okay, so if I just show you a quick example of this in practice, now here is a quick example that I've set up in Bricks Builder. Now currently we have uh, two columns here, as you can see, and we only have three cards, but I think this is gonna be good to show you. And currently this is using gap L. Now let's go back to core framework and we're gonna set up a new utility class to use. So let's just call this uh, blog gap and we'll do asterisk. And what we'll do here is we'll do gap as the property, but this time we'll reference our new scale. Now I am going to rename this scale just so it's easy to understand everything. Blog spacing. So you can see that this is changed automatically. And because I didn't save it, let's just go ahead and add that once again. I'm also going to rename this to blog padding and then let's add blog gap. Once again, we'll do the gap property and we'll target blog spacing like so. So save changes. 
Now remember, this scale is using a little bit of a larger values compared to our spacing scale. So when I flick between them, you can see the, the difference there. Now we will see it quite a lot on the L, as you can see, there's quite a big jump from looking at the visuals here. So just make sure this is saved. I'm gonna go back here and just refresh. Uh, I'm just gonna load this on the front end as well. So here's what it looks like currently with a normal gap L. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete gap L and I'm gonna do blog gap L you can see that the classes are showing up here so when I save this and refresh on the front we will see a slightly bigger gap like so and then I can do the same for the cards themselves so each card gap L rename this to blog gap all right and because this is a query loop the others have updated automatic I'll save this and refresh once again now we are using the larger gap scaling system so that's pretty much it for the spacing tab once again if you do have any questions please just let us know and we'll be happy to assist you thank you very much